Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today is part two of our Proc SQL Crash Course. If you missed part one, it's going to be linked in the description below. We are going to be using the data tables that we created in part one here in part two to do some analysis. So I highly recommend that you go back and look at part one so you have the data. But let's get started for part two today. So the challenge here. We want to think about being bookstore owners. So if you own a bookstore, what data do you think you would be interested in knowing? Maybe you want information about your customers. Maybe you would want information about your sales or other financial metrics, like how much are you selling? How much revenue you have? How much money do you have to buy new books? Maybe you wanna know information about your employees. Maybe you would like to know information about the products itself. So what type of genres do you have? How many authors do you have? All of that. So all of those questions can be answered with data. So anytime you are working with data, think about the stakeholder or the person that's interested in your insights, because the whole purpose of doing SQL and analytics is to gain insights and to help tell a story. So think about that question as we go through this lecture. So we're gonna be focused on some main SQL clauses today. And these are going to be main SQL clauses that you're gonna see throughout various SQL tools. So these are going to be the same clauses that you see in MySQL. It's gonna be the same clauses in SQLite, the same clauses in Postgres. Remember in part one that SQL is SQL is SQL. The only difference here is the flavor, okay? So we're gonna use proc SQL through SAS. So you're gonna have some SAS extensions such as some SAS functions that you can only use in proc SQL. If you are using this in Postgres, there will be some syntax that is specific to Postgres. But once you know one flavor of SQL, it's pretty easy to know them all. So the main clauses is gonna be select from where, group by, having, order by, and limit. And you can see those definitions on the screen. When we're using select, we're gonna select some columns for, that we want to look at. From, we're gonna tell it where to select those columns from. So what table or tables are you interested in? We're not gonna get into joins in this part, but it will be in a future lecture. Where is gonna allow us to filter the master data set. Maybe we want some group by analysis. So maybe we want to group our sales by book genre. If we would want to do that, we would use the clause group by. Having is another filter, but it's only based off of the group. Order by is going to order our results and limit is going to limit how many rows we return. Because if you're working with real, real big databases in the industry, you're going to want to limit the output so you're not just using up all the computational resources at your company. So keep these main clauses in mind, and these are the main SQL clauses that you must know. So let's go back to the bookstore. Let's get some insights for our stakeholder. So the task here is to provide the bookstore owner with insights about what they are selling in store and about their sales. So our first insight is going to be, the owner would like to know what data do we even capture in our database? And this is a common question for senior leadership. They would want to know, hey, what data do we even have? What data do we even capture? Does all the departments capture the same type of data? Because at times you don't even know what you have, right? So it's always good to look at what you have. So for every insight, we're gonna hop right into SAS Studio. And the code that you see up here now came from part one. As I've mentioned, we were able to create three tables. So we have an author's table, we have a books table, and we have a sales table, okay? And with each one of those tables, we inserted some data. So we've inserted some data into our author's table, our books table, and our sales table. So this is going to be the same database that we're going to be working with. Of course, this is a fictional database. It's a pretty small database just so we can practice the skills. Keep in mind, you're going to need this lib name statement up at the top where this path is going to be to a directory of a folder on your computer. Or if you're using SAS on demand for academics, you can quickly add a folder on the left-hand side and then right-click properties 
and copy and paste that location, okay? Because that's where we're gonna store all of our data tables. So we're gonna wanna run this first. And I have all of our insights down here as comments. So let's get started. So our first insight, what data do we even have? So we're gonna do proc SQL in with a semicolon. All of our queries are going to start just like this. And then we can select information from each one of our tables. So in part one, we talked about how we can do select star or select asterisk, and that is going to select all of the columns that we have. So I'm gonna select all of the columns from each one of these tables. So I'm gonna call, my database is called test SQL, and the specific table is called authors. And I know that that's my table name because I can look up here and see it, right, when I created it. At the end of every query, which a query is just a list of clauses, I'm going to put a semicolon that is specific to proc SQL and SAS. And then I'm also going to do that run statement. So I'm going to highlight this and I get out everything. And notice that it's fine that I'm getting out everything because this is a very small table. So I see that for our company, we capture an author ID, we have the name of the author, and we also have the birth year. If I wanted to check out the books, I can easily just do the same query, just change author to books. And I see that I have information such as book IDs, the genre, and the author ID. And then last but not least, I can also look at sales since we only have three tables here. And I can see that we capture sales and this is just the number of books that we sold since this is a book ID, as well as the genre and book ID, which we also had in our books table. So that answers question one, what data do we actually have? And I highly recommend that you do this exploration before you do any type of statistical analysis, anything like that. What do you actually have? And most of the time you can get this information from an entity relationship diagram, an ERD, where you can ask the data engineer or whoever owns the database, can you print me off a list of the tables and how all the tables are related as well as the schema. So you don't even have to do selects if you have access to that. Okay, great. So our second insight that we have for our bookstore owner, they want to know how many unique genres do they have? They want to make sure that they're competitive. So if they're a genre that they're missing, that's really hot now, they may want to pick up that genre, etc. So we're going to start it off with prot sequel, right? And then we wanna get unique genres. And this wasn't something that was necessarily in the PowerPoint, but we're gonna start off with a select clause. And what column do you think that we're gonna select if we want genres? We're gonna select genre, right? And we see that we have two tables here. So we have the books table that has genre, and we also have the sales table that has genre. So in this case, it doesn't matter which one we use. So I'm gonna do select genre. Okay, and then I'm going to do from, we're just going to do the books table since it was the one first. And then I'm going to see run. Okay, so I'm going to select genre. Notice that genre has a capital G in my create table, but it doesn't matter in this case because SQL is not case sensitive when it comes to your clauses. It is case sensitive when you're filtering. And we're gonna see that momentarily. So when I run this, I get genre. But does it give me the unique genres? No, because it has duplicates. So what happens when I wanna get rid of those duplicates and I just want unique? I can do a keyword called distinct right after that. And now I don't see those duplicates. This gives me the distinct genres. Now, the keyword distinct that's in blue here is across all SQL languages. SAS also has another keyword called unique that is specific to SAS, and you can actually get out the same result as well. So I'm going to just keep it as distinct just because that's more common. Okay, great. So now they know what unique genres they have. Now they want sales per genre. So the question is, how many total sci-fi sales do we have? 
how many fantasy sales do we have? How many nonfiction sales do we have? So they want sales per genre, which makes sense because they want to see which genre is selling the best. So as always, we start off with Proc SQL. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to do a select. Okay. And I'm going to do a nice little function called count. Okay. And this is going to count things for me. And then I'm going to select sales. So we need from, let's see our sales table up. So we're going to do test SQL dot sales table. And then we want to group by something. So if we want sales per genre, what do you think we want to group by? Yep, we want to group by the actual genre. So let's do group by genre. Okay. And I'm actually going to change this count to an actual sum and I'm going to do sum of sales, okay? And then in this case, I'm going to run this. So let's see. So it gave us the sum of sales 28, 90, 91, and 312. But I don't really know which genres those numbers correspond to, right? So maybe in my select statement, instead of selecting a sum of sales, I also want to select the genre. So I know which each genre pertains to. And then when I get it back, I see that we sell a lot of sci-fi, right? And notice that my sales column does not have a name to it. I can add a name here by adding what we call an alias. So we have a sum of sales as total sales. And then when I run this again, I would see that column now called total sales. Okay, so a lot of things going on here. We use a built-in function, which is sum. We use an alias to recall that column total sales and aliases always come after this keyword as. And we did a group by. And then because this data set is so small, we can double check, right? So sci-fi 112 plus 200 should give us 312 it did give us 312. So it's summed properly. So I always like to pull out a row or two to do like a sanity check. But that's how we get our sales per genre. Okay, another insight that we would like to know as bookstores is we want to know our hot books. What books have over 50 sales? So in this case, we're going to do proc SQL as always. We're going to do our nice little select. Okay. I'm going to select everything from now. And then I want to know sales information. So I'm going to go back to that sales table. And now I'm going to filter because I only want to filter for books that have over 50 sales. So I'm going to say where. And here we have the sales as a column called sales. So I'm going to say where sales is greater than 50. Okay. So now I'm able to filter the data. And then I'm going to hit run. And so in this case, when I run it, I only get the book IDs that have sales that are greater than 50. So this is our hot sales. Okay. Now, Instead of the book ID, maybe I would want the author or the book title. And so it's like, how do I get that? That's going to be in a future part when we actually are able to join the data together. Say, for instance, we can join our books table with our sales table on book ID. And then we can join it again on author ID to actually get with which author is selling the most. It's awesome. But for now, it's filtering. If I want to filter for books with over 100 sales, I would just change this to 100. Right? Okay, so the fifth insight that they would like to know is the top two books with the most sales, okay? So let's go ahead and start off with proc SQL with a semicolon. That's what we do. It's a small data set, so for now, let's go ahead and select everything. And we're still on that sales table. And now I want to do order by, and let's see sales, okay? 
So let's see what this query does. It doesn't quite give us the answer, but let's see what it does. So I'm selecting everything from sales and order and buy sales. How does it order the sales? It orders the sale based off of ascending. So the default behavior is that it's going to order from least to greatest. But if I want the books with the highest sales, I need to flip that to order it from greatest to least. So I'm going to put a keyword here called DESC, okay, which stands for descending. And let's run this. And now I get the top two book IDs with the most sales at the top of my table. So what I can do, and this is outside of SAS program, programming, is that I can use what we call the limit clause. And you're going to see this clause in other SQL languages. However, this clause is not specific to SAS. So inside of here, I can call what we say a out obs option, and I can set that equal to two. So now when I run this in Proc SQL, I get my top two book IDs. Now we see this yellow here. If we looked at the log, it's just letting you know that it terminated early. That's great to us because we only wanted two observations to begin with. So inside of SAS, Proc SQL, different flavor, we can limit by using out obs equals two in other coding languages or other flavors of SQL, we can just call limits clause. All right, great. So our sixth insight is we want to know nonfiction book sales, okay? So in this case, we are going to do proc SQL. Once again, let's go ahead and select everything. We're dealing with sales, so we're gonna do from test SQL dot sales let me just space this down so you can see it better and then we want nonfiction books so we need to filter for that right so we're gonna say where genre equals and this is where we're case sensitive at where i have a capital n a capital f i have to put it just like that nonfiction okay and then I would want to run this, but what am I actually missing here? Do I want to get everything or do I just want to add up the sales for all of my nonfiction books? I want to add up the sales. So I'm going to do sum of sales and let's just call it as NF sales. That stands for nonfiction. And let's see if this works for us. So in our result, we get 90. Is that correct? If I scroll back up to nonfiction, 32 plus 58 does indeed give me 90. I can always add another column in my select statement to give me back that nice little genre so that I know that it's nonfiction, right, as well if I want to separate it out, okay? All right, so notice that when I added genre, it gave me two individual rows but I want it to give me the sum. So in this case, I can add a group by, right? For it to group by genre. So now when I add this group by here, I get my 90, okay? And just one row, so it doesn't look like it's duplicated. All right, so those are some great insights. Notice that we stayed in the sales table a lot. That's because many stakeholders are very much interested in money, right? Financial metrics. So we answered all of our questions. So how, what data was in our database? What was our unique genre was insight two? How many sales did we have per genre? returning books that have greater than 50 sales, return the top two books, and last but not least, return only nonfiction book sales, okay? All right, so that was part two to Proc SQL. Ask yourself more questions. Think about things. What author sold the most? And write a SQL query for that. If you can think of a question, you can practice your SQL, okay? So thank you for tuning in to part two. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Learning with Jelly. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.